Hello again, everybody. This is Jim from DeBergerac. Thanks for watching our video. And today I'm going to go over how we're going to repair the area that's left in these edges from where the old hinges were in there. Um, as you've seen on the previous videos, we installed the new hinges and now we just got to repair it because the mortise for the hinge is larger in that one small little area because the other hinges were closer to the top surface. Now this part of the video is really not important to you if you've already installed your hinges but we still need to repair this project and we're going to do that now. Remember when you're fixing somebody else's work keep a good attitude because it might be somebody else fixing your work later and you want them to have a good attitude for your customer. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll get these pieces glued in that I've fabricated and we'll get the job done. Today I've made a, uh, a new jig which I super glued together. Not just any super glue, I use a 2P10 which you get at the industrial um, commercial store and the jigs glued together no need for screws or anything I'm not going to throw it I'm not going to play basketball with it or slam it on the floor when I make a mistake uh, we only have 12 areas to cut out this one will work just fine and besides the glue is pretty strong and then I've made up a bunch of little pieces out of teak show you how those are done they're just little tiny pieces I'll show you how they go in they're going to do the repair we'll glue those in those I made out of a larger piece of teak you see the dimensions when I did my route out I put a half inch radius back on each side and then I cut them down run them through the table saw to get this small little piece out of them as you can see now remember, when you're doing stuff like this, I mean, I can tell you all day long and you can still make a mistake running something like this through the table saw to make it smaller. But this is your true family. They're right here. You have 10 family members. They're with you from morning till night. Try to take care of them. Don't let them get cut on the saw. Be careful. There's other ways to trim this down if you wanted to. You could run it on the bandsaw, sand it in, whatever you need to do to get that small piece out of there. I did it this way and run it through the blade, but it's inherently dangerous as all woodworking tools are. So keep your family members in touch. Keep them all whole. And uh, today, I'm really excited. I get to use my little friend. This is a uh, Porter Cable 100. That's the model P100. Kind of interesting little R2D2 machine. Um, I love using this machine. It makes me happy just to be able to use it. It's the old throwback. As in the other videos you saw me using the Festool routers, the vacuum system, they're great. And they really are excellent tools. But when you can get your hands on a nice little old school machine like this, it just kind of makes your day. Okay, you can see this little area in here where the old hinge set in originally. This is what we have to repair. It's almost a paper thin material. I don't know if that shows in the video or not, but they removed so much material down in there when putting those smaller hinges in that it made it really thin. And if you remember on the previous videos, we had um, little dents coming up on the top surface. So this is what it look, what they all look like now. You can see this side's cut out really clean and nice. And then on this side, it's um, a little torn up, so to speak. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that. Now you can see this is the one that I've already routed out with my newly made jig. And you can see that this is the part that's going to go in there. 
it's going to get glued in like that and make a nice tight filler piece. And now I'll show you how the that router jig works for that. Okay, now we're going to use the jig. And again, this jig is set up just for cutting this. So I'm going to set it on like so. Get it lined up so it's just to each side of that notch. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it in place. Put my glasses on. Uh, safety first, right? Make sure that everything's good. Tap it down firmly. Remake, recheck the clamps. We're going to set the router in there. Real nice, make sure it's floating. Turn it on. Always wait for the router to stop before you remove it from the part. You don't want to damage your jig or worse yet the piece. We take our clamps off. Let's see how we did. Okay, that one routed out pretty well. Little piece is going to go in there. I'm not entirely happy with that because so much of the material is removed. So I'll set it up one more time. And I think that's where we're going to have to leave it. We did take off everything we could. So there'll be a small line on the back side of that when it's glued up, but we will have our filler block in there. And we'll clamp it up real nice and clean. We're doing the best we can with what we have. Uh, if I take it all the way out, I'm literally going to have just several thousandths of material in there. The digital calipers tell me that that wood is 64 thousandths, which 62 is a sixteenth of an inch. It's 84 thousandths on the outside. So me going in and taking more material off in there is going to make that really, really thin on that top surface. So we're going to leave it where it is for now. And the next time you see me on video, all of these will be glued in. We'll have sanded them. We'll show you what they look like. And just another little thing over here. What I did is, on the original cutouts, I took two bearings, router bearings, which are half inch in diameter, and I put some clear tape over them so I could know how what my dimension was going to be for my jig. You measure that out and it measures two inches and thirty-three thousandths to the outside of those router bit bits. So then that way when I made my jig I could make that accordingly. And everything worked out well. So again just put the router bit bearings at the end of each radius, measure to the outside of them, and that'll tell you how wide to make your jig. Lots of cool stuff, huh? Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you all soon. Well, it's the following morning. 
and you can see all the small pieces have been glued in. So everything's done. We'll be ready to pull the clamps here in a few minutes, pull the tape, start sanding these parts in. But we put that in with the uh, Fasco, and you can see they're all fitting. So now it's reroute everything and go from there. So we'll be back. Okay, I wanted to uh, just show you the new hinges. I know we would shown them on the video earlier, but I wanted to compare them to the hinges that we took out of these table spacers. So you can see the difference in size and overall scope of the, the hinge. And see what we had to do to repair it. Now I'm going to go ahead and install this and show you the finished product. Okay, so here's all of the uh, parts finished. Finally have a completed project to put on the video. Um, you come in and look at how these fit. And you can see the little piece that we put in there to uh, make up for the gap where the old hinges were. So the whole thing came out pretty nicely. And then we'll just uh, get a little piece of green paper in here to keep them from getting damaged. We're gonna fold it over on top of each other. But if you remember from the other video how the tops are dented up from the hinges squishing them down. So we've got that part of that as good as we're going to get that and um, after we put the hinges in we cleared the uh, edges on that inside and then we just buff the tops out so they're pretty even the only other way that you could make this um, a little bit better and if you have the versatility to do it on your project instead of having your hinges up at the top you could put them on the bottom side which will allow the fold it the other way and then it wouldn't be as close to the um, top finish but on this they haven't folded this way so we just went ahead and put the big hinges in and finished the job up so we hope you enjoyed the video and um, we'll talk to you again soon